So, Lagrange polynomial error, what we mean by that is a degree n Lagrange polynomial at distinct points, uh, the data we've been using, x0 to xn, n plus 1 data points, in some range of values uh, from a to b, where we're approximating using the Lagrange polynomial um, uh, function f is being approximated using the Lagrange polynomial. So, f needs to be cn plus 1, that means continuous n plus 1 derivatives on the interval a, b. Then this... Uh, uh, this Lagrange polynomial approximation of the nth degree uh, has error as shown here, which is the n plus 1th derivative at some psi of x, which is, um, you know, is the, it's the maximum you know, conservative estimate, so it's the estimated value on a, b of, uh, uh, you know, of this psi of x as some estimate on the interval of interest a, b uh, of the maximum value of the derivative and divided by n plus 1 factorial and multiplied by uh, the, the terms that you would get in the Lagrange polynomial. And this is the nth term, in fact, of the product of all the um, x minus the data points. So this, would, this is the error term. Now, uh, let's look at a quick example uh, of how this error term is calculated. So um, this is, the, this is a, uh, an example that we did earlier in, the, in a previous video where we approximated fx equals 1 over x on the interval 2 to 4. Examples taken from Burden Farris, uh, the book on numerical analysis. Um, so um, the data points that we were approximating on were uh, 2, 2.75, and 4, three data points on the interval 2 to 4. We used the Lagrange polynomial to approximate 1 over x, and basically, as a reminder, I'll just uh, put the polynomial here for you. So this was the polynomial, and the question, the example that we did was basically approximating, uh, you know, f of 3. And uh, again, let me just, uh, just put that here for you. So f of 3 directly is one-third, as you know, which um, if we write it down here is just 0.33 recurring. Okay, and if we calculate p of 3, in fact, that turns out to be so that turns out to be approximately 0.32955. Now you can see that's reasonably close, and the error we have here is, the error is approximately 0 0.003783 or whatever. Now what we want to do here uh, is, now that we have this Lagrange polynomial error, what we're going to do is estimate the error for the function f of x equals 1 over x, and that's what you see here. So this is all about this uh, functional function approximations, uh, using Lagrange polynomial. So this function here, f, this is f is 1 over x. So the first thing we'll do is we'll calculate the derivatives. So here uh, we have uh, f dash of x is equal to uh, minus 1 over x squared. Piece of cake. All right. And then we have f double dash of x is 2x, um, 2 over x cubed. And f triple dash of x turns out to be minus 6 over x to the power 4. The error term only has 3, it's, so it's the third derivative by 3 factorial, x minus x0, x minus x1, x minus x2, which is equal. So what happens then is this becomes, just I brought the uh, uh, psi of x to the power minus 4, uh, so instead of x we have psi, of course, psi of x, and psi of x I just brought, the, brought it up, so it's just negative um, uh, the 6 will cancel with the 3 factorial. So I'm, I'm just putting that down here for you just so you can see. There's the 3 factorial. These things cancel, and you're left with this. Now, what we want is the size of this, and for some, the, the psi on 2, 4, and that's the point we, we, we really want to find out what is the maximum value and absolute maximum value of this, um, the derivative. Okay, so this term here, okay, we need its... Um, maxima absolute value, and this on the interval uh, 2 to 4. So we need to work that out. The first one isn't uh, very difficult. Uh, in fact, uh, you can clearly see that the largest value, um, uh, I mean, 2 would provide us with um, 1 16th, okay, at x equals 2. So psi would be approximated by that. So um, uh, 2 to the minus 4, is the largest is the is the max value uh, we have we have of the derivative this on the other hand is a bit more complicated we have to 
and go and work this out as a maximization. We have to find for the, uh, you know, the, the absolute maximum on the interval two to four. So we'll have to get some candidates uh, by actually differentiating this. So uh, let's call this function for the moment. So we let gx be this. And now what we want to do is um, that turns out to be actually, turns out to be this cubic. And now what we want to do is find its maximum value on the interval two, four. So at two, clearly and four, this is just zero. So we need to see if uh, there are any critical values, which means we have to find the derivative. So let's find the first derivative. It turns out that that's three x squared minus 35 over two x plus 49 over two, which simplifies to, simplifies to this, which we equate to zero. And that gives us x equals seven over three or x equals um, seven over two. Now, um, of course, when we uh, substitute this value for x, uh, I'm sorry, this is the largest, this is the largest, this is one of the uh, critical values. So all we have to do is to substitute this into the actual expression. And we find that, in fact, uh, g of 7 thirds is equal to, when you work it out, it turns out to be 25 over 108. And g of 7 over 2 uh, turns out to be um, negative 9 over 16. Now remember, we're not interested in the negative sign. We are looking at the positive, um, the absolute values here. So it turns out it's less than or equal to take the 1 16th and the absolute value of minus 9 over 16. Uh, so that turns out to be 9 over 256, which is approximately 0.0. 351. Uh, 156. Okay. So if you look at our um, what the error we got before was this. Uh, this is 0 0.035. So this is a conservative estimate. And as you can see, this is this could be the maximum error. Okay. So here this is the maximum error, and this is the uh, encircled here. This is the error we get uh, for our particular case. So clearly, uh, this is bigger than that. So, so the estimate, so in that case, the error was smaller, but this is the maximum error you can get. Now, here's the problem with, uh, with Lagrange uh, interpolation. So one of the biggest problems is that, um, as you would have noticed um, in Taylor's uh, series, for instance, or and in a situation where you want, in Taylor's theorem, you can actually define the number of error terms. Now, you looked at the bisection method we before. You would have seen bisection. You would have seen uh, Newton's method. And you can define a level of accuracy, and it will give you an approximate number of iterations required to achieve that accuracy. Here, the problem is there are no iter the iterations themselves are simply the number of points. So the more points you have, the more accurate uh, within an interval, the more accurate your uh, uh, polynomial uh, approximation uh, would be. The issue with this is though that um, if you had for instance three points and you found like in this case now suppose that we have these three points 2, 2.75 and uh, uh, 4 and we found this approximation. Now suppose that that turns out to give us an error of 0 0.003 and, the you, and you're not happy with that. You say well okay that's very inaccurate. I want 10 to the minus 8 accuracy. Now, if you were doing Taylor series or the other iteration iterative methods we've looked at, we can have user-defined accuracy and give an idea about how many iterations would it take to get that accuracy. In this case, the Lagrange, as you can see, the error is a calculation once the points are defined. So in other words, if you added a point or added a few points, you would then have to recalculate the error, okay? And that might be the error, you're, the, the level of error you want, the maximum error you want. Um, but the problem is that in Lagrange interpolation, for an extra third point, for instance, if you had an x3 here, in this case, if you had an x3, uh, you know, something, whatever it was, suppose you had the error extra data point. Well, you can't actually use this um, second order polynomial and add a third or uh, polynomial term. You can't do that. You'll have to start from scratch and calculate the Lagrange polynomial approximation, which makes this cumbersome, which makes it very inefficient and difficult for specifically to approximate functions with user-defined accuracy. So this leads to uh, uh, one of the drawbacks of Lagrange interpolation when we're trying to approximate 
um, uh, functions, in fact, and we want a certain level of accuracy. Uh, so the, in order to overcome this, in fact, we look at the next, in the next video, we will look at um, the method of divided differences or Newton's divided differences, which overcomes this um, problem to a certain extent.